Hello everyone. In this third lesson of how to make my first game in Unity tutorial, we are going to start exploring some C Sharp coding. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So as explained in the last tutorial, coding can be somewhat problematic for some people who are brand new to it, but rest assured, everything I teach in this series when it comes to coding, I'll explain. So what we need to do in this tutorial is as these are going to be collectible coins in our small game, we need to have them rotate or something like that. So we're going to create a script which will allow us to attach to this coin and it will rotate when we run the game. So let's create a folder where we can store all of our scripts. Let's go to our top level assets in the project window, right click, create, folder, we'll call this scripts. And in here, let's create another script which will allow us to make that rotation. So right click, create, and you'll see the second option down is C sharp script. Let's click that. And now we can type the name of our script. Let's have this as coin rotation. And you'll notice I have a capital C and a capital R and no space between coin or rotation. It's important that we remember the name of this as it will come in useful if we ever do change the name of the script. So let's hit return. You can either double click or hit return on this script and it will open up in Visual Studio. Now you can use almost anything to write your code in. I'll be using Visual Studio as it's easy and convenient and most people who are new to Unity will probably have this installed by default anyway. So what is all of this? All of this are the default lines of code that the script will give you when you create a new script. These three at the top are known as a namespace and we don't need to worry about them just yet. They aren't going to be important when we are rotating any particular object. The next section below is known as a class and almost everything we write in a script is going to be inside this class. The next sections down are known as methods and these methods are pretty much where the grunt work happens within code. So everything we want executing in code will more than likely occur inside these methods. So we're going to do a couple of things in this script. We are going to write some code inside a method and we're also going to declare a variable. Now, by default, as I said, it gives you these two methods and we do not need both of those. The only one we need is this void update. So whenever you see the word void, that's a method known, or rather I should say it's known as a method. And whenever you see green writing like this, that is an annotation. This isn't a line of code. This is just a note to give some information about what a particular section does. And you can put anything you want, providing it does have a double slash before it. Now, as we are only using this void update method, we can delete these lines between the two green sections because we don't need this void start method. So we can select all of that and delete. What we do need, however, is a variable. What is a variable? In its simplest terms, a variable is a way of storing information in a script which can be changed and or modified at any given point, either by the script itself or by a different script. We can also set that information ourselves at any given point. So we are going to use a whole number or an integer as a variable here because we want to be able to possibly change that number at any given point. Now, to declare a variable, we have to type the word public and then the type variable. In this case, it's going to be an integer. And to declare an integer in C sharp, you just type the letters INT. Obviously, that is short for integer. After those two, we now need to put whatever we want as the name of this variable. As long as the variable is named something sensible and relative to what you are creating, then you're not going to have too many problems. So for example, we're going to have this as rotate speed. And like I say, you can call this anything. You can call this purple card if you wanted to, but 
it wouldn't make sense because it's not a purple card, it's a rotate speed. But it just illustrates the fact you can call this anything you want as long as it's not the class name, the script name, or the me any method name. You can't call it that. So rotate speed is just fine for now. And you'll notice that I have used all lower casing on that line of code apart from the S on speed. So the name of your variable doesn't matter on capitalization. However, the other two sections do. Capitalization is important when it comes to C-sharp coding as some things can mean different things depending on whether they are capitalized or not. So when we come to say public int, both all of those have to be lowercase. So once we've named our variable, we have a semicolon at the end. And that is just basically a way of the script realizing that that's the end of the line. Let's move on to the next line of code. So let's hit return. So we've now declared our first variable. By default, because we've not said it is equal to anything, it is going to be equal to zero. Now we could logically add that to the variable declaration, but for now we're going to see how all of this has an impact on the script itself when it is applied to a game object. So like I say, we want this to rotate our coins. So we need a game object to rotate around itself, presumably on the Y axis, because that is the vertical one. So update is called every frame. So we want this coin to rotate constantly every frame. We don't want it to just rotate once and then stop. We need it to constantly rotate. So we do this inside the update method. And the way we do that is we play around with the transform component of the object. So if I go back into Unity and I go to our cylinder, which is this coin here, we want to rotate on the Y here. So we want to play around with this particular section here on the transform component, or we want to rotate. So we can use that to our advantage. We can say transform dot rotate because that's exactly what we want to do here. Now what we need to do is we need to tell it how to rotate and we do that inside parentheses. So open bracket and now we need to put a couple of values. So we don't need it to rotate on the X so we can have zero comma. We do need to rotate it on the Y, but we want to rotate it according to this variable that we have declared here. So rather than put a number here, let's type rotate speed. So that will rotate on the Y axis. Now, comma, we now need to put on the Z or Z axis. And again, we don't need it to rotate on the Z or Z, whatever you want to call it, depending where you are in the world. So we just put zero. And the reason we now have this next section after the Z is so as the script can recognize how to rotate this relative to the world around it. And we simply put space dot world, close bracket and semicolon. So let's recap what we've done here. We are going to tell whatever object that this script is attached to, to rotate nothing on the X, whatever the value is in this variable to rotate on the Y, no rotation on the Z, and we need it to rotate relative to the world around us. So if we save that script and head back into Unity, it will take just a moment to compile. But when it has compiled, you will now be able to drag and drop this script onto these coins. So let's just start with this first coin, this first cylinder. Let's drag and drop onto there. And now let's click on cylinder. And you can see that that script is now classed as another component on our game object. It isn't on any of the other game objects just yet because we haven't applied it to them yet. However, it is on this one here. Now our rotate speed is set as zero. So if we press play, we will not see any rotation at all. However, if we start changing this rotation speed, let's have two, you can probably see there 
that the shadow of this coin is indeed rotating. So what I think I'm going to do for now is bring all of these coins a little closer to our camera. And let's take our camera and let's bring it upwards so we'll be able to see the rotation. So let's go over this again. So pressing play means that we have no rotation because it is set as zero. However, if we type one, there we go. So that script is now executing that line of code to rotate this little coin right here. And obviously it can be rotated to whatever number you would want. You can go as crazy as you want to. However, we need to make this rotate according to the world around it. And rather than type the number, we need it to do it automatically. So let's head back into that coin rotation script. And where we've declared this variable up here of rotate speed, let's actually give it a value rather than zero. So just before the semicolon, we need to put equals one or whatever value you would want it to be equal to. So now we can resave that script. Let's head back into Unity. Now, if we press play, we will not see any rotation. Now, the reason we will not see any rotation is because theoretically, this script has been modified after we have made uh, the addition to the game object. So what we would need to do in this instance is remove that component. And to remove a component, you right click on it and click on remove component. Now, if we drag and drop that script again onto the cylinder, you'll notice that the rotate speed automatically changes to one. So just keep that in mind that if you make changes such as saying a variable is equal to something, after you've applied it to a game object, you may need to reapply that um, script to the game object. So now if we press play, we should see spinning perfectly. And we can attach that script to each of those coins just by dragging and dropping. And now we should see all four spin. Excellent. So I know at this point we are only three tutorials in and this game doesn't exactly look fantastic. However, you have to remember that even the simplest of games can take many hours to create. And so far this series has ran for probably less than 40 minutes. So in 40 minutes we have this and this is something good. So what do you think is going to happen in the next 40 minutes worth of tutorials? Could be good. So the final thing we're going to do is let's rename some of these objects because we can't have things just named as cube. We can't just have things named as cylinder. We need relative names to them. So let's right click, let's rename, and we'll call this ground. Next, let's just call this coin. And we can do the same here. Coin, coin, and let's do the last one, coin. Now remember when we duplicated, well, even when we duplicate now, good thing is that we will still have that rotation script on the duplicate coin. We can see it rotating just there. Let's rename that coin as well. So in the next tutorial, we are now going to take a look at creating a playable object. What I mean by that is we are going to have an object which we can move around the scene using our WASD keys. And that's going to be a lot of fun to code. So I hope to see you in that next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.